Welcome back. We've been talking about what's been going on with all the disasters from Texas to Louisiana to Florida to the Caribbean to our own coast even. Well, food banks have stepped right into their continually emerging role now as a disaster relief agency able to quickly deliver donated goods. But with so much infrastructure damage from Texas to Florida, one Long Island food bank had to hold on to the tons of donated supplies pouring in from Long Islanders wanting to help their neighbors down south. It was a bottleneck caused by the lack of power at Southern warehouses normally used to receive hurricane donations. There is no electricity, so there's no refrigeration. And then to get into some of these areas, you cannot pass. They're not allowing. But some local landlords stepped forward to donate space to help ease the log jam, which was eventually broken when a major refrigerated warehouse opened up in Savannah, Georgia, allowing the trucks to start rolling south. And here with us now is Migdalia Otero with Island Har Harvest. And welcome to the show, Migdalia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your efforts at Island Harvest. Where do things stand now with these truck shipments? Well, basically, we're now being called upon not only for Texas um, and uh, the things that are happening up in uh, Florida, but now we've been called upon for Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico as well. Yes. But now that's not even in the continental U.S. You guys are extending your network of help that far now? Um, they're part of the United States and part well, of Feeding are. America. Right. So because of that, we're able to, to, to lend our support and hand. What will you be doing for Puerto Rico? Um, we've been contacted, and now we're going to be sending down about eight tractor trailer loads, about wow. 240,000 pounds of uh, food and water. You have that much stuff collected uh, since what I saw that was piled up? Yes. Since that's then, incredible. we've collected... Um, over 400,000 pounds of product. Um, we've gotten donated warehouse space in different locations because the overflow is overwhelming. Yeah, that's 200 tons. That's big. That's a huge amount on all primarily from who on Long Island was donating this? Um, we have fire departments. I mean, not only food, um, but we've gotten food. We've gotten funds. We've gotten equipment. We've gotten donations of warehouse space. Um, but you have individuals, troops, um, uh, Girl Scout troops, Boy Scouts, fire departments, um, companies, everybody. corporations. Schools. Everybody has come out um, to show their love and support. I've seen people walk into your warehouse with boxes. Yes. Yeah, and they're like, can I help? Help and you, there's this huge warehouse with stacked to the ceiling, but somebody will bring a box in. Yes, uh, we've had a lot, probably about over 200 uh, mini food drives uh, right. across Long Island that have also been supporting us. Well, it all helps. And you know, uh, so how will you get that uh, donations down to Puerto Rico? How are you uh, going to do that? The efforts are being handled through Feeding America. So they are, you know, sending a truck to us and it's going to be shipped out through United Airlines. Oh, you going to fly up. it in? Yep, we're going to fly wow. it in on a cargo plane. Because they really need the help and we still don't even really know what happened. There. So here you are helping already in Puerto Rico, and yes. you already uh, were, were helping down south. You know, the, the role of food banks has truly changed. It's been going on for a couple of decades, but I think particularly with Superstorm Sandy, the relief agency saw that, hey, we've got a ready-made helping hand here because you have an established trucking network mm -hmm. uh, with warehouse space, and you really have emerged in this role. Now you're, now you're going to Puerto Rico. This used to be a, a Long Island food bank. Right, and we still are a Long Island food bank. You know, we have a disaster resource center. Um, ever since Sandy uh, came upon us and we learned a lot of different things, um, we decided that we were going to open up a resource center so that we can not only help the people on Long Island, but anyone that's in need and a part of the Feeding America network. So explain a little bit more about how you solve the problem in Florida and what caused it in the first place. Now, a part of it was that we were so generous on Long Island here that they came in, because you have three warehouses and they quickly filled up. Yes. Um, I think what we saw was the outpouring when Sandy came upon us and we saw how much support and people were willing to give that we opened it up and sent out information, you know, across Long Island and started saying, you know, if you are willing to help, we're going to collect and the Donations just started coming. Uh, is it the most you've ever had? Are you even surprised by what you've seen? I'm surprised. I'm not really surprised because during Sandy, we had an overwhelming response as well. Um, so we were expecting it. We just didn't expect it to be as fast. Are as you still needing your uh, these local business people that helped out? Talk a little bit about the people who stepped forward when they heard you were in a jam. Um, when when we first started, we started looking and assessing to see what the needs were. Um, we didn't have much space, so Casone stepped out um, and said, "Listen." 
and we have uh, containers that you're able to use. So they brought us some containers. I reached out to Recla Equity and to Lamar and Mar Associates. I said, I need some warehouse space. We need to do, we need to, because we still have our own business that we have to handle on Long Island. So we still have a network on Long Island that we still have to feed. So we borrowed the space and, and that's open a, arms. You know, that's a big thing because they could be renting that space and making money. Exactly. And it can be big money. So this is a significant uh, effort on the part of local business to lend a hand to in, in whatever way they can. Yes. So now what is being sent? Because it's critical now. People realize, you know, they might just go in and collect everything in their house that they want to give away. But that's not the way it should be done, right? What are you sending there right now? What is the priority? The priority in um, in Florida has been uh, water and pop-top canned foods. Um, in Texas, they have the same needs. Um, in Puerto Rico is, you know, the, I, I think all three areas, four areas uh, that we're supporting at this point is the same thing. Pop-top cans, health and beauty aid water, things that, that do not require electricity to, um, to utilize because there is electricity in some areas in Florida, but not all areas. And then people might even be able to get into a kitchen. Simple things like exactly. a can opener that you would just take for granted most of the time. Mm -hmm. That if you have a can of food in your hand, but you can't open it because of a can opener, that's why the pop top cans, right? Exactly. Yeah, and we all like the convenience of that anyway. Um, the thing is, I, I was also struck by the toys that people donated there because that's kind of heartbreaking, right? It is because, you know, some areas lost everything. And you know what? To keep a child um, happy and they've already seen the disaster, they see, you know, that they're displaced. So, you know, people have poured out and given uh, uh, toys to uh, children. Uh, the recommendation, though, is is to uh, limit the, the the clothing gently use clothing and toys um, at this point because they're just trying to assess all the infrastructure damages that they need they have nowhere to store anything um, so it's like take and go um, or eat and go so you know what the, the food and water is what and funds funds is definitely number one because they know what their needs are um, and they can buy it they have better uh, buying power um, through the Feeding America network to purchase whatever they need locally well you know what makes me feel good is to know that there's people like you doing this because you know you got to get up every day and decide you want to go help somebody out it can be a job but it's really a mission for you and the folks you have what 8,000 volunteers at Island Harvest yes. that's a remarkable number of people who are committed to this and we really appreciate you doing it's making a big difference thank and we you. want to talk about people making a difference a little bit uh, more uh, Migdalia Otero with Island Harvest thank you so much for being a, our guest here this morning thank but you still again. ahead for you some high school teens who survived Superstorm Sandy sending their best wishes to hurricane survivors down south with their love letters from Long Beach that's next